talk a little bit beyond the pitch. So please welcome Michael Friedman. <clears throat> okay, so I've been doing reality TV for about 10 years, and in the last few years I've been producing more, and then in the last year I decided to go out with a show of my own. <clears throat> and I was surprised at how many things I didn't know about that process. Um, and so when I talked to Michael about coming, I, I felt like this would be valuable for people. This is information, I, you just don't, some of it's information that you just don't get anywhere. And uh, there, there is a rule book, but they don't hand it out. And so there's a couple pieces of really unique information here, and then there's just some general strategy. Um, and actually, it's not selling, it's pitching, because I don't know how to sell one. My project didn't sell. But I had a great time doing it, and I made a lot of good choices. And that last piece of selling is the sort of magic part. It's like telling somebody how to be a movie star. You can't do that. You can tell them how to be an actor and how to try to work at it. But that other element is, is not something that you can teach. Um, I try to use the analogy of coming up with a show. It's like going on a date in six months with somebody, and you have to decide, you have to write on a piece of paper right now what you're gonna say to them. And you have no idea what's gonna happen between now and then with them, what they're gonna want, what just happened to them, you know, what happened on the way there, and you have to be perfect. You have that one chance to be perfect. And pitching a show is sort of like that. If, if I roll tape tomorrow and shoot a sizzle reel, uh, it's, it, it's my fate is sealed. It's just a matter of whether that's gonna line up with what people want in a room six months from now. So that's the selling part, and that's the part that, you know, it just requires uh, timing and, and luck. So when you take a pitch out, you're basically doing two things. You're taking out an idea, and if you're trying to sell it, you're also selling yourself as a producer. And so most of what people take out is they say, oh, I have a great idea for a reality show. Reality sort of uh, engenders that kind of speculative creativity of like, oh, I just have this idea. Because it just seems like it's an idea. Putting a bunch of people on an island is an idea. Um, the thing about an idea is it's not worth anything because you can't do anything with it. You can't copyright an idea. You can copyright the expression of an idea, which means if I say I'm going to do a show with a bunch of people, put them on an island, not feed them any food, and the last person gets a million dollars, that's an idea. <laughs> the expression of that is the actual show. If I say um, I'm going to write a movie about a boxer that you know loses a bunch of fights and comes out in the end, that's an idea. If I make the, write a script for Rocky, that's the expression of the idea. So an idea basically is worthless, even to. I mean, it's not just me, it's anybody. We'll use this guy as an example. This is Mark Burnett. A few years ago, he had an idea for a show about boxing. And he got a couple of guys that know a lot about boxing, and he decided to call it The Contender. That's a good idea, right? So he took it around, took it to Fox. He said, hey, Fox, do you want to make my idea? And they said no. Coincidentally, as he's leaving the room, Fox gets an idea about making a show about boxing. And they know a guy who's into boxing too, and they're gonna call it Next Great Champ. So even a guy who's the most established person in reality TV with an idea can't protect it because this is a different expression of that idea. So what he ends up with is he had set forward with Sly and Sugar Ray Leonard and I think NBC, CBS, and they were going to make the most expensive reality show ever made uh, going into it. It was going to be over a million dollars an episode. They go into development and production. Fox goes into development, production, much less development, but production right away on their show. And theirs comes on TV first. And then they make Mark Burnett look like he copied their idea because he's six months later. And their show didn't do so well, so now these boxing competition shows have this sort of stain on them. 
So all this is basically just to illustrate that if you have an idea, it's not enough to go on. It's not even enough to really take anywhere. Even if you have an idea for a nanny show, someone else can have the same idea. Or you're going to trade family members, somebody's going to do that too. I think one of each of these, I think, is, is a Fox show. <laughs> and, It's not, it's, it's sort of a, it's not really a slam against them because it's, it's a choice that they make about how they're gonna do business and people know that if they go, if you go pitch Fox, they're gonna take your idea and bring it out sooner. And, and they pay the cost for that in who's gonna bring them projects. I doubt, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I doubt Mark Burnett brought them more projects. But, um, so an idea is not really gonna be worth anything. So, what can you take out? Well, you can, if you have access to something unique, like you're the only person that can get into this prison, or you're the only person that can, uh, you, you know the owner of the Roxy, or you know somebody famous, you have this unique access to them. That's something you can take out. That's a commodity. A really good example of this would be this guy. This, uh, whoever signed a deal with him had exclusive access to this, you know, sort of colorful person. And this is the kind of thing you could take out. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a very marketable example. But that's not enough because you can get people who are famous um, and have really bad shows about them. And w a few years ago, Britney Spears was the most famous person one of the most famous people in the world. And they decided to do a reality show about her. They handed her and her husband a bunch of handicams. It wasn't a produced show. It wasn't like, uh, you know, let's put them in these situations. They just sort of gave them a bunch of cameras and then took the footage back and cut it into a show. She, this is before, this is maybe a little bit before the train wreck stage. She's still a very famous person. And that show, I don't think, ever broke a one. Um, so famous isn't enough. So for the rest of this example, um, we all in this room are going to come up with a show. Um, so we found Patty. Patty's a unique, cute girl. Patty owns a pie shop. Patty's in a punk rock band. And Patty blogs. And so we're going to call our show Punk Rock Pie Shop. <laughs> Great idea. So we have exclusive access to Patty in her pie shop. And what we're going to do is we're going to sign an agreement with her. And that's what's going to give us something to sell. Until you have that piece of paper, you don't have anything to sell. Because you could take Patty into Fox, and Fox says, we don't want Patty. You leave, and Fox calls her and says, hey, Patty, come and do a show. Um, you need that piece of paper. And that, that, that deal is basically going to sign people to you for six months or a year. There's going to be sort of a protection clause for you that if someone you pitch to them ends up calling them a month after you pitched, but the, your, your uh, deal expired, then you're still attached as a producer. It's just sort of a, a loose, it's an it's a, it's a exclusive commitment, but they're not signing their life away. So one of the things about signing is that you need to manage expectations of talent. And this is for whoever you're getting involved with. Um, because people see TV and they think there's lots of money you know, everywhere. And in some cases there are, but in the kind of show that we can sell with Patty, there's not a lot of money. So we're gonna to talk to Patty about money, uh, control, and credit. And the money is basically terrible for Patty. Um, if, if they signed a deal with her, she could expect to get paid maybe $2,000 an episode. Um, if you think about that, you know, they order six episodes, and that takes a big chunk of her life. That's not a lot of money for Patty, who's on TV. Additionally, because they know they're going to make Patty's pie shop famous, they may ask for, and certain networks do ask for, a piece of Patty's company. West Coast Choppers got pretty famous, and those guys got rich, and I think people saw that, and there are 
networks that if they're going to put your tanning salon or your bar or your pie shop on TV, they're now your part owners um, for your two grand a week. <laughs> uh, so the money is something you need to really be um, informed about before you sign people away because if they learn that when you get to the network, you could have just wasted a whole six months or a year of your life shopping stuff around. Um, it's not the kind of shock you want at the network because she could know right then, I would never do this for two grand an episode. The other thing is she's going to be locked down. So if they do a pilot and six episodes of Patty's Pie Shop, part of her deal with her bad fee is going to be that they're going to, she's going to be exclusive to that network for a couple years. So she can't even go somewhere else and try it again. So it's a big gamble. I mean, once you cross that line into signing with a network, it's uh, unless you get a really great deal that you can get out of, you're, you're getting married for a little while. The other thing you should talk to Patty about is credit. Because, um, you know, if you went to a dog, the bounty hunter, I think he'd probably say, I want to be a producer. Um, that concession is going to be baggage later on that's going to make you very unappealing to production companies and to networks. They're not going to want these people, like, you know, they're not going to want them in the room at certain points where you're talking about the show as like a piece of product, you know? You don't want that person there. You don't want them having sort of grandiose ideas. You need pragmatic producers, and you don't want the expectation of the talent sort of being producers, so I think you want to try to avoid it at all costs. 